Hello, and thanks for joining me. This is Teresa, and I am going to do a um, walkthrough, I guess I'll call it, of um, the new digital kit collection called the, <coughs> excuse me, I did take a drink before I started to try and avoid that. Um, we're going to look at the Floral Grace Digital Collection by Amanda Charlesworth of Crate with Scrimping Mommy. So, my um, Crate with Scrimping Mommy or my Scrimpy Mommy folder is very full right now. And a big part of that is because I have the digital kit printed out. I think I've got it all printed out. I was very busy yesterday with, um, let's see, what am I looking for here? Mostly getting the, the ephemera cut out. That, that was a big job because it's like 18 or 19 pages. And I have a video short of me, um, I need to move the camera. You can see my chubby tummy. There we go. <clears throat> so, sorry, still getting over a cold, which, okay, I'm going to rabbit trail here real quick in regards to ephemera. So, Amanda, if you're watching this, I have to apologize to you because the other day I had said that um, that freebie that you posted for the letters wasn't printing out. And let me tell you, those letters print out beautifully. I've got so many things going on here. I may rabbit trail a lot. This is a little ephemera folder that I kind of put together for this project. So anyways, these letters just print out awesome. So I think she calls them letter tiles. And look at, look at that. Now, um, I just am drinking some Thai tea, so there's a lot of caffeine in that, so I'm going to try not to shake too much. Look how beautifully that cuts out. I was really amazed. Anyways, here's the deal. So, I st still have brain fog. I haven't noticed it is bad today, but yesterday it, it was pretty bad. And um, it's from being sick. And so, anyways, um, when I, since what, I tried cutting it out on Friday because it would have been a Friday freebie up until yesterday. Finally, I did everything that I could possibly think to do. I called my husband back here and I said, I've done everything I can and I, this thing's broke. I can't get the cricket to work. So, and I was so proud because I got to the point where I could start to cut things out. And anyways, he's, he's looking at it and asking me questions. And all of a sudden he goes, is that plastic cover supposed to be on there? And, you know, at first I was like confused as to what he was talking about. But in case you don't know what the plastic cover is, on these mats they have a plastic cover on them. I have been trying to cut with the plastic cover on since last Friday and I hope you're all laughing with me um, but I felt really bad because I had said that maybe the lines needed to be a little bit darker on this because at this point I can't get them to print and my printer wasn't recognizing and blah blah blah. Well that was a huge snafu on my part I don't know where my brain was, but it obviously had not checked in for the last few days. And um, anyways, took the cover off, started cutting out these, this ephemera, and the ephemera cut out super, super beautiful. And the images are great, and I'm loving them, and um, I mean, even these. So, as I worked on these more, I felt like these even were cutting out better. 
So what that means is that when I'm better at preparing the image, the digital that was created by the author has done a good job. So these printed out so nice as well. And um, I just, I'm very happy with them and I love them. And um, I'm going to have a lot of fun using these in my, um, this is straw paper and it's going to tear with my shakes. So I got to be careful. Okay, but we'll get back to this in just a minute. So let's put this to the side. So the ephemera is not printed out. It is, there's, there's this kit and then there's an add-on kit. So if you go to Amanda's Kofi store, which I will put the link in there. I know the link is already in the short that I did yesterday for the kit. So if you find the kit, you'll be able to find an add-on by going to her Kofi store that way. Okay, so hopefully I won't make any mistakes introducing this kit. This is the front page, which I may use for the cover. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use it for the cover. Now, what's really neat that she did with this kit is she um, put the pages together. So you've got a front page and a back page. So I may end up printing another one of these so that I can have this as a front page. As a cover, I'm sorry, is what I meant. So then you've got this page and this page. Now, I bought, of course, um, I, I didn't buy. Um, that's the next thing that I'd like to mention is that I was honored that Amanda asked me to um, be a guest um, to put to, to what I want to say. Um, represent her collection to show it by like cutting out the ephemera and putting it together and now I'm gonna do a real fast um, journal so anyways that was a huge honor and really made my day when I opened up the message and saw that so I'm in the United States that's why I started saying that and so this is how mine prints out for the United States pretty good I'm not wasting hardly any paper at all so then there's this and actually I think I'm gonna hold this one closer no let me try using the zoom instead of shaking I always forget to use the zoom Okay, so look how cute that is with the suitcases. And I even took something like this and I cut the suitcases out and I cut the flowers out so that I could make it into a little bit of ephemera. Where did I do that? Right here. See that? The little suitcases kind of blend into that paper and then these cute flowers so fun so fun and then the the fun thing too is that when you have this page in your journal th things like this are real easy to journal on like I might do a bible quote right there real easily that would be a lot of fun because one of the things that she did with this um kit is she did a gesso look. That is so cool. I just love that technique. I'm all about techniques. And I just love all the different techniques in the world for crafting. I don't think I've ever met a technique that I didn't like, unless it has to do with measuring. So that's why I love junk journaling more than folios, because folios are way too much measuring and it hurts my brain. So this is, I just love the script. I love anything with script in it. And I'm going to stay zoomed in and hopefully I won't go off screen too much because of this. And the newsprint, I'm going to call it newsprint. Just so many fun elements included in this kit.
Roman numerals on the clock. I love that. So this one is upside down. This is a Teresa Snafu. Um, I think I might have even printed two of these because of that. No, nope, it doesn't look like it. So I think I decided to get away with that one because my printer doesn't print duplex. And so I struggle to make sure that I print the right way when I do the back side. Let's see. Yeah, I did print it twice. So I fixed it here. So this page I'm just going to use for maybe some collage or something. And then look at these beautiful pages. And when she has these pages, this one somehow got stuck to my mat. I think I must have laid my mat on it. And I pulled it off it. If you don't pull it off right, it curls the paper. Anyways, getting past that. So we've got a pink one and a blue one. And then we've got a pink and blue background here. I think there's about four different background pages if you count like journaling. And I think I did the journaling upside down technically, but fortunately you could have it either way. This is another element of her digital that I just love. Because I love lines to write on. So the background. We've seen that already. So this one is upside down and this one I didn't care at all because, you know, it looks just as good that way. Another copy of the journaling. Of course, I got to do extra copies of the journaling. And then I did one just the right way. So then... Like what you can do on this side, if you don't want to print another copy of um, one of the digital pages, you can, um, like one of the things I like to do is I like to take a um, mask, ouch, a stencil like this, and then I have, like in this bottle, I have um, coffee. Swish, swish, swish. And then swish, swish, swish. And then you can even like go like that if you want to use more. It dries very quickly, so I'm just going to set this over to the side to dry. <coughs> My mat, it's well past due for a good scrubbing. Okay, so there we go. There we go. We've got that. So let me just make sure this is dry before I put these lovely papers on here, and I don't have anything to draw this with. Well, three. Okay, dry, 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 dry. Okay, let me grab my bone folder out of my lovely little container that I created from a tutorial of Amanda's. If you haven't, gone to Amanda's YouTube channel, Scrimping Mommy. Make sure you find it and take a look because she's got some great ideas. Oh, actually I don't want to fold these until I um, prepare them. Darn, I meant to prepare this. Whoops, sorry. Bump the table. Um, but let me, let me just do a few. I'm not going to do all of them real quick. So, 18 pages of ephemera, I'm pretty sure, is what is included in this kit. And again, it is an add-on. 
and the images just cut so nicely if you've got a Cricut. I don't know about a scan and cut. I would guess yes if it works so well on the Cricut. And here, here's the thing. <coughs> um, I don't know if I'll ever quit having a dry throat from being sick. It's very annoying. I mean, I don't talk a lot during videos. Really, I don't think so. Normally, but I knew I would be talking a lot for this one because I wanted to demonstrate this collection. So, that's not very much paper that I have to cut off. It would be nice if it would print to the edges, but I don't know any digital creators that print to the edges. So, I'm just being um, demanding. Come on, digital creators. Do U.S. images that create to the edge. Okay, so there's two. Let me do one more. So when I put this together, I'm going to do the three pamphlet, three, three stitch pamphlet. I cannot talk this stuff. I just know enough to get it done. I did really want to have this done before I started the video, but I had to work today and still have some work to do, but I wanted to do this before it got too much later. And so I said, okay, quit trying to prepare and jump in. I'm gonna do one more that is something like this. So I use um, an Epson 2800, ET 2800, so it has an eco tank, and to print my digitals, and I use, for the most part, I ran out yesterday, gosh, I bumped the camera again, I don't like it when I do that, anyways, for the most part, I use a heavier weight copy paper, and I use, um, it's all gone, because I used it up yesterday, but it's like a Hewitt Packard, and I should be getting an Amazon notification here pretty soon that more has been delivered because I went ahead and ordered more yesterday. Specifically, it is, let me check, Amazon. Where's Amazon? Well, right there. I'm looking on my screen. I'll be right with you. It is, oh, Hammer Mill Printer Paper, premium color, 32 pound, um, that's 32 pound, I don't know what GSM that is. So, anyways, that's the type of paper that I printed this off on. So let's go ahead and see if we got enough pages that we can have a little fun with. So my junk journal for this is going to be decided by the size of the paper after the edges have been trimmed off. Now some folks will just go ahead and fold them in half and um, not be bothered by those edges. 
Usually that's not me. I don't want white edges. Whoops, backwards. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, so I have a little, um, what do I wanna call this, overage? It's not totally even. So this is something that I made a decision about the other day, just recently, is that from now on I'm gonna do my signature first, and then I'm gonna build my co cover. Now, so say this was my cover. So then I could, once my signature is built, or signatures, then I can build a cover that wraps around and there's no uneven. And that way I don't have to worry about trimming these because that in itself doesn't bother me. And it, it doesn't even always bother me, even normally, like, let's see. I think this one, let's see, these, yeah, these aren't even, of course, this is a really cool cover for, to hide that lack of evenness, but, um, anyways, just some things to think about as you plan your journal, um, and then I'm, I'm, you know, assuming I'm talking to new people who don't do this all the time because I'm definitely a newbie and I'm still, I'm still, um, coming up with my, my, I call it my voice. Um, it's, it's the way that I do things. And so I do that in my professional life, of course, with my professional life. I, I have the voice where when I talk to people, I have confidence and I have knowledge and that sort of thing. And so they trust me and they hire me and stuff like that. So maybe I should call this my craft. I'm still developing my craft. Okay. So look, look how beautiful this is. It's distracting when I'm trying to do this. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to round the corners. I like to do that sometimes, but I don't, pretty sure I'm not going to be encouraged to do that. So, of course, this is the front page of the signature. And let's start with, um, by the way, now I was going to talk about this little ephemera holder. So, I just had this little... Mm, one sheet wonder type thing hanging out and I was cutting out all this ephemera I was like oh my gosh this is so much ephemera it's it's starting to get away from me it's going all over my desk and stuff like that I love to make ephemera holders I love to play with ephemera I, th I think I love it more than journal making and so um because I love to organize and categorize and so even as I was putting these things in the pocket, I was like, I could do a better job of dividing that up as to, you know, these are little labels, these are bigger labels, um, and that sort of thing. Like, did I mix some butterflies with some, some bows? So here we have butterflies, bows, and clocks. Do I have butterflies somewhere else is what I was very concerned about. These are all tags back here. These are file folders, and then we've got, what do we got? Um, like the cages and stuff, and then somewhere here we have the more labels, more of those. I don't know what to call those. And then we have the words in here, and I think I have something else. I have the pink and the blue words in here. So this little ephemera holder was not planned for any, I mean, it wasn't an ephemera holder. It was just sloppily folded up and threw off to the side and I designed it as I went. So I, I have some, I glued in the wrong places where it wasn't shutting nicely and everything. So I just inked it to make it look like aged paper. And then we have 
these things, which are huge and don't fit anywhere. So we've got this really cool envelope. We've got two envelopes, which are this, no, they are different. So this is part of the ephemera. This is going to be a long video, by the way. So where are we at? We're at 25 minutes right now. So um, feel free to scroll through or mute me. Sometimes I'll mute and put closed caption on. This is a file folder. And so I tried to print things with backgrounds and I missed this one. So I coffee dyed it. What did I do here? Nothing yet. And nothing yet. That one's already glued. <clears throat> Here's another file folder. Coffee dyed it. Here's another envelope. Nothing yet. So it looks like we've got three different envelopes. One, two, three and I think we might have three different sizes of file folders. Let's see. So one, two, and then these big ones. And there's only one of the big one, but I um, had printed on the back side and then as I went through the ephemera and I was printing it out and cutting it, I found that there is a big folder, file folder. I'm going out of the camera a lot because I'm zoomed in. Um, a big file folder insert, which is what this is. So I printed that out and I put it in there and that's why I printed two of these big file folders. Hmm. Yep, these are the same image. Yep. And they come with these little index things on them. Like that. I love them. Okay. Now, let's just move this because we're going through this ephemera. These are pockets. There's two pockets like this. And by the way, this is the only negative about me not having the ephemera pages printed out. Uh, the, the ephemera is put on the page very well to avoid wasting paper. So when you print out a page of ephemera, you have to print the whole page. And if you've got white spots, then you're wasting your paper. And that is especially annoying if you're using a Cricut to cut things out because you have to go through some work to set it up and everything. I was very pleased with myself because I set my Cricut up yesterday so that I saved the images in Cricut. So if I want to go back and print more of these images, I don't have to do that initial work that I did like bringing the JPEG in and removing the background and then resizing it so that it will print on the Cricut mat the way it's supposed to, so on and so forth. So let's see, where should we start? Okay, let's start with the front. So we've got all these lovely images. So we've got these and we've got the bird cage with the birds. And then we've got a bird cage that doesn't have birds. And let's zoom in. And then move these over. And then just in case, whoops. 
just trying to make it so that you can see all this as best as possible. Okay, probably should put these back away after I'm done. Because I'm going to have a pile on my desk if I don't. Okay, then we've got these little labels. So we've got pink, and we've got blue, and then we've got a blank pink, and a blank blue. And then we also have, over here, some more labels that came with the file folder, and they're blank. But we have these little tiny labels that are so cute. They have the words like memories, has a number, has the word file, has the word document, has the word important. I think that's it. I don't want to take them all out because I'm worried about messing with them too much and bending them up and of course the more aged, the better. More aged look, the better. Whoops. Okay. So there's that. Now, let's see. I'm trying to be systematic about this so I don't lose my places to what I've shown. Okay, this pocket here has tags in it. So we have this tag out of camera I just love using the Cricut look at those cut lines I could never do that nope I could not do that so three bookmarks there and then we have some um, I think she called them chubby tags. So, it's okay to call them chubby tags, at least by somebody like me, because I'm chubby, so I don't have any problem with that reference. Well, it doesn't seem to be fitting nicely. Move on. Okay, so we've got one back in camera. Let's go out a little. Okay. Two, three, four, let's see, I don't think that'll show, five, and six. So we're pretty familiar with most of these images. But this is so sweet. Okay, there's those. And so we showed everything here. We talked about the letter tiles that have, they have, um, oh dear, what do you call that? Not, not just a sentiment, it's a, never mind, it's not coming to me. Um, and then we have, this is what I really wanted to show you. This one little tonight is getting bent, but oh my gosh, I could never ever cut something, a butterfly that, like this. Look, and it hasn't even torn it is so thin, it cut that thin, and it hasn't even torn. That is so awesome. I know, it's the little things that make me happy. Look at those butterflies with that little pink. These are lovely butterflies. See what they look like being used? Okay, there's two different sizes of butterflies, I think. I might be wrong. Yep, there's two sizes. That size and that size.
And then we have bows. And I think we have two different sizes of bows. So the big size cuts out three, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I still feel like it was three. I might have dropped one on the floor. Oh no, I used some of these. So there's three little butterflies, butterflies, bows. And they're, I'm going to take those out because they look like they want to bend. And there's, yeah, there's three of the big bows. Look how nice they look being used. Imagine what they will look like in the digital kit. And then we have three clocks. One, two, whoops, maybe four. Nope, I stand corrected, four. So, no, this is the same as that because I did print this twice because I like these four to use right away. So we've got the little roses, we've got the birds, and then we've got the pink roses or whatever those flowers are. Okay, so that's the clocks, the bows, and the butterflies. Now what do we got to show? Showed all of that, showed all of that. What are these? Oh yes, we need to show these. Okay. So we've got flowers. Look how pretty those are. I should not get my hand out of the way. Okay, and these are designed so that they're mirror images. Which makes it good for doing like a, um, a clip, say like a magnet clip or hidden paper clip. So there's two each of these and they're mirrored so that you can put them one against the other and when you are able to use the Cricut, the cuts are so perfect. I am just gonna geek out right and left about being able to use my Cricut now. Look at that. That is very awesome. So yeah, these are probably my favorite roses. And might not have been such a great idea for me to ink the ephemera before I showed it to you, but if you don't like that kind of like grunge or vintage look, aged look, this is what it would look like if you just went with shabby chic. So pretty. Okay, there are the mirrored images. Now we have the pockets and she has four pockets that are four different sizes. Just trying to keep this in camera. How fun is that? I love pockets. And I'm even tempted to do one page with just all four pockets. Do something like Nope. Yep. I 
I'm even tempted to do something like that. The only reason, I love that. The only reason I might not want to do it is because you cover some really fun stuff. But I think I'm going to cut another set of this out and do one page like this and then use the other pockets randomly throughout the journal because I love pockets. So then we have the bird cages. I feel like I've already shown these. I've used some of these. Oh, and here there's these fun little things. These are more file folders. There's three of these. One, two, three. And they have a journal spot inside of them. So your little, little labels fit on here. Okay. And then you can open this up. And so I did print this double sided. I was out of camera again. So let me show that again. Your little label fits on here. In my defense, I keep going out of camera because I'm trying to be zoomed in so you can see the beauty of the digitals without me having to go like this because then I shake and you're going to get seasick from that. But let's lay that down, line up that little label, and that's very cute. And then I'm imagining that I will just use some little paper clips like this. And these will be floating journal spots in my journal. Okay, so there's those. So those you might even want to print off more than one page of because they are super cute. Now, I did print everything on my heavier weight um, printer paper, but a lot of times after I do that the first time, or sometimes even before I'll think it through, but like you might want to do these tags on cardstock. You might want to do your pockets on cardstock. Um, you might want to do these pockets on cardstock. I kind of like these to be on the heavyweight paper for writing, but those might be another good thing to do on cardstock. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm just going to do a little more ephemera demonstration. And then um, I'm going to end this video and I'll probably do another video tomorrow of a journal flip through. I think that's what I'll do. I don't design when I'm doing a video because that would be it's just not a good thing. I'm too in the zone. It takes too long. And I think it would be boring to watch me design why I'm um, doing a video. Okay, so what I did want to do before I said sayonara is I'm going to, wrong, wrong area. I'm going to take some paper. I'm going to show you two things that I like to do with tags. One is I love straw paper. I usually hoard my straw paper. I just love straw paper. I want to find some good rice paper. If you know where some good rice paper is, I was looking the other day and I just wasn't landing on something that looked like what I wanted. And it would be so nice if it was in the United States because then you don't have to wait forever and a day for the shipping. So, Tamu isn't that bad, but I've decided not to buy from Tamu anymore. I've done two orders. I was kind of 
hesitant as to whether that was something I wanted to do for myself in the beginning and then I was reading somewhere and I kind of decided not to again. I knew I didn't want to do AliExpress because I had already heard reviews about AliExpress and um, so it just, oh, you know what? I left my lid off and it, this really dried out. I left it off overnight. Okay, well, we don't need to ruin my ephemera just to use that last little bit of glue. It was almost gone anyways. So this is a good chance to take a drink. I have this lovely Thai tea. And I think it's because it's got cream in it that that's probably not a good idea for my throat. But it tastes really good. I love Thai tea. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for another glue stick. Let's see if we can salvage this tag now that I put that yucky old glue on there. So what I'm doing with my glue pages now, another process that I have refined is when there's too much glue on this page, I put it to the back so that I can use them over instead of fold them up and possibly use them again, possibly end up throwing them away. Oops. Am I on camera? Sort of, kind of. Maybe we can zoom out a little bit more now. doesn't feel very gluey. haven't been cutting in a video recently either because my, my shakes have been too bad. Now see what's the purpose of having this the cricket and then going and doing this. Dang. Um, I'm going to get stuck doing these cuts. That's okay. probably won't do this because I'm 
not in any shape for cutting right now. So, nix that plan. Just going to trim these off and put it in my work basket. Let's see, I just ate, so it should get better here in a little bit. Or maybe not because of the tie key. Darn, I wanted to finish doing these. I might suffer through one. Something like this doesn't embarrass me or bother me. I just don't want to, you know, make it painful for people to watch me do this. But I think it's important to show a little bit of this so that other people who go through what I go through will, you know, just hear about it from other people that go through what they go through. It's kind of like when you're a kid and you grow up and you need your parents to tell you about the birds and the bees and stuff and if they don't you have to learn it from other people or not learn it at all and uh, but getting older I realize how much that I wish that I would have been more comfortable to talk to my children about You know, um, not necessarily just a comfort level, but thought to say it instead of like, well, you learned it on the fly, Trace, so they can learn it on the fly. There's so many things, like getting older, you know, like us people who are going through, say, our 50s. I'm not going through my 50s. So when I say us, I don't mean me. Um, but you know, because our bodies go through changes and we go through aging and stuff. Okay, I'm going through my 60s. So it's good to talk to people who are going through their 60s or maybe even 50 to up because we all start different things, 40s, you know, Ladies start menopause sometimes at 40, sometimes at 30. So talking to other ladies um, about those sort of things is, you know, you don't think about the fact that that would be helpful. Um, I'm sure there's books, but how often do we have time to pick up a book and read once we get to that age? Actually, sometimes we have more time. I don't think I did. Cause I've got a large family with grandkids and stuff that we won't talk about right now because my kids are being little, I'm just going to say it, turds. And they need to get their act together. Okay, so I'm not going to do those. I just wanted to do one. So we've got that. Now we're going to grab... One of these or do I want to I'm gonna do blue let's do this pretty blue if I can get my fingers on one I'll try not to drop it on the floor that not working it's 
some of these don't work right. I don't know what the deal is if I bought two different kinds or what. Okay, nix the blue. My metallic ones so far always work. There we go. Perfect. Just what we wanted. Now I decided that I'm going to use, I call this Mito string because that's what my vague memory is that these are called. These are from Taperology. Whew, it's getting warm in here. I think I want this one. I just kind of like the look of that, I think. Nope, maybe not. This one right here is my favorite. But still, that's too aqua. Okay, I don't want aqua. Back to this one. I just can't pull those colors in my mind. <sighs> yep, that one. I think I'll just use this thick one. If you see anything that you like in the video that inspires you or encourages you, would you please um, leave me a, a like and possibly a comment? I love talking to folks, responding to their comments. I usually am live and so the chat is enabled pretty sure it is anyways because um, I've seen people chat at me a couple times there that looks good okay that tag is ready it has a nice spot for journaling on the back of it I might even do a little stenciling on the back of that and we're at 59 minutes so, um, oh, I wanted to show one more thing in regards to ephemera that I'm going to do for this journal. So where did I put it? Where did you put that? I think I put it in my work. Got some extra pieces here ready for to do the journal. Here we go. This is where I put because I was gonna do some um, of those scrappy flowers today. I prepared some fabric that is stamped on and some cheesecloth that is coffee dyed. I was gonna do some of those tatty flowers as additional ephemera for this journal, but that will have to wait for the next video because I didn't get that far. But I did do these hidden paper clips. So I took some of the newspaper print digital and 
I did these hidden paper clips and so what I will do on the end of this paper clip is I will put an eyelet first time I made these I didn't push the paper clip all the way down and so the paper clip was all the way up here and I couldn't do my eyelet so I did two of the newspaper print and I did two of this floral wherever the second one is I don't know I don't know where it went. The other thing that makes me mad at myself is when I don't think about which way I'm putting the eyelid in, like I didn't on that one, but I did it right good because I like the eyelid to be where the long leg of the paper clip is and not the short. It's just personal preference. I still muster through even if I goof that one up what I consider to be a goof up for me. And then this way you can put a charm on it or some more like mito string or maybe even some sari silk. That would be kind of pretty, wouldn't it? Let's give that a go real quick. one with a little bit of not that mm. yeah that would be okay I'm gonna cut this real thin I may need first aid after I do this. Yesterday I pinched my finger on a box that I was closing. I think it was my big box that I... Okay. Try not to cut myself. I made that real thin and then I'm just going to knot it. know if I finished my thought earlier but it's important to let others know that what you're going through because they might be going through it as well and maybe it gives them some comfort or affirmation or something that even with challenges we can still be productive and do things I, I think I really like that more stark pink kind of fuchsia on there. I think that really brings out the pinks on that little paper clip. So then you can, uh, like if you've got a floating envelope, what, what did I say was, well I already had paper clips on that one. Then you can, you can use these as tabs too. Look at this, because they go pretty deep. 
And so then when you close your journal, what a cool tab that ends up being right there. So um, the inspiration for these paper clips are called, I think they're called like paper clip slips or something that um, Tracy Fox, um, I got the template from Tracy Fox so that I could do these. The first time I hand cut them out and they're okay, but these I cut out with my circuit and I was able to cut it out on Amanda's paper, which made me happy. And I think they look so much nicer. So I was going to see if I could show you. I hope this doesn't make anybody um, feel left out if you don't have a circuit. I mean, you can still do things. I've been doing it for months, years, when you think about stamping up. But these I cut out by hand. And so I put some dangles on it and stuff. And um, it can be done. Like this one I cut out by hand and I did a, a pretty good job on that one. One out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a couple more that are okay. But these are perfect. So if you've been thinking about buying a circuit and you need another reason to justify it, here you go, right here. And if you've already got a circuit and you need a reason to justify pulling it out because you haven't been using it and learning how to use it, here you go. This is a good reason right here. Next, anybody who needs help with your circuit, I am by no means an expert. There's other people in the group who are so much more talented than I am in that respect, knowing how to use their circuit. Cricket, cricket. Is it circuit or cricket? Oh well. Anyways, um, but I'm happy to help. There are some things that I learned along the way that I did see in a video, but no video had all of the things, all of the basic things even. Um, in fact, some of the videos made it look like, oh my gosh, this is looks really simple. Why can't I do it? So there, there are things like, now I didn't really need to calibrate my machine, but I thought I did because I left the plastic mat on there. Um, but I really feel like after I calibrated the machine that it helped. I, I th think that the reason why, I'm not so sure about this one, but this, this is so close. This is right on her marks. It read her marks beautifully. And I credit that to calibrating my machine along with a good quality graphic. I was doing pretty good to start off with. Um, before I, you know, three days ago when I started going brain dead, but um, the this is I'm I'm really positive that this is better with the calibration. So you can do it without calibrating or not, pretty much I think. Um, then the other thing, let's see. So. I right away gave up on trying to remove the background on my own and bought the Design Space subscription. Even if it's just for a month, it's worth it to do that. And I don't think I'm ever going to try and prepare my own digitals. But so you've got a digital and it comes in on a sheet and say it's this one. This one has three tags on the sheet. And so you, you pull it in and you can click to remove the background automatically. You just click. I don't like that. It doesn't work very well that way. It, it doesn't consistently work well that way. So in another video, I found that you click the little select button and then in the bottom corner of your graphic and it will remove all the background. You look at how it's gonna cut out and boom, it does a really good job consistently. 
there was one that had, um, and it was from one of these digitals. Mm. Trying to remember. It was something that had, I don't know, maybe something like this that it all blended in at the top. And I had to do a little finagling on one out of 18 pages worth of graphics. So let's see, what else? Then you pull it in, you have to resize everything so that it falls within the perimeters of what the Cricut will cut on the mat, which is, I think it is 6.75 by 9.25. As long as it's that or smaller, it will work. And it's good to save it right then so that you don't have to go through all that work all over again. Now, when I was doing vid looking at videos, there was one gal who said, oh, you know, design space can be memory intensive and it'll bog down on you. So you might just want to bring in like three to five graphics at a time. I've done fine. Um, you know, some of these pages, this one probably had hmm, three, six, maybe it had like nine or 12 graphics on it. It worked beautifully. So the deal is just making sure that you're using a JPEG or possibly a PNG image. Fortunately, everything that I've been using is in JPEG and it works perfect. I did pull up a digital the other day that was PNG and I'm going to experiment with that and see how that works. And um, anyways, this is segueing into a Cricut video and I really didn't intend to do that. So back to what I was just about to say. If you have any questions about how I did these digitals with the Cricut, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to do a Zoom with you or something like that if you need some explanation as to what I did to make this work. I use an, um, what do I use? I use a Cricut Explorer Air 2 machine. So that's what I've got for you today. Sorry, this was such a long video, 72 minutes. And um,